Warning, this video contains spoilers for episode 33 of Critical Role's Campaign 3. Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel, dare to nerd where today I am making cupcakes inspired by Critical Role's character, Fern Calloway! If you don't watch Critical Role but are interested in how to make fawn horns or a rose-flavored cupcake with matcha frosting, well, here you go. I hope this video helps. For those who do watch the show and have seen the latest episode, how you feeling? How we doing? You okay? Talk to me. Beware, there is going to be serious Dungeons and Dragons talk throughout this video, so if that's not your thing, just mute it. And here's where we get into spoiler territory, so if you haven't watched episode 33 of Critical Role's Campaign 3, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Fern is my favorite character of Campaign 3. Not just because of her chaotic, mischievous personality, but because of her overall design and build. And it seems like her backstory, along with Imogen's, is heavily tied into the major underlying plot surrounding Ruidus. It was shocking and heart-wrenching to see her go down, especially when Mr. disappeared. But from the way that fight was going, from the start, I figured there'd be a character death. But I thought it would be Ashton, considering how many times he went down. All it would have taken was a hit while he was unconscious, and that would have been two death saves down the shooter. And the longer the fight went, the more it was looking like a total party kill which has never happened on a Critical Role stream. Ever. I have never been genuinely worried about a TPK before on this show. No matter how bad things got in previous encounters or in previous campaigns, I never thought there would be a full TPK. But with this fight? I thought we might be seeing the first in Critical Role history. And it still might happen. They're not out of the fight yet. By the time I'm editing this video and by the time I post it, episode 34 hasn't aired yet. So all possible futures are on the table. Every multiverse has a chance. Including the absolute best case scenario. Reviving both Fern and Orem. Fresh Cut Grass still might be able to revivify Fern, and then she might be able to revivify Orem. But even if they can't, depending on the circumstances, both of them have ties to some pretty powerful NPCs in this campaign. Like, Fern's parents will definitely want to revive her, and if they don't have the ability to, Morrigan almost certainly can. If good old Nana Mori loves Fern so much that she stretched time over a hundred years just to keep Fern with her longer, you can bet your last copper she'll revive Fern. Enigmatic deals or exchanges notwithstanding. She is a hag, after all. I can definitely see her going, Hello, my pretties. So, you want me to return my granddaughter to life? And what will you give me for this favor? Grandma be gangster like that! Orem also has ties to Keyleth, who is a very high-level druid. She could potentially bring him back. But I'll talk more about that when I do an Orem-centered video. My main point in this brief rant is that, for now, at least, we still have hope. There is still hope that these characters will continue their adventure. And in case you've seen episode 34 or later episodes and the worst has happened, well, here's a cupcake for you. Hang in there. 
for now. Thank you for watching this video and indulging me in my thoughts on the latest Critical Role episode. Please leave a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And don't forget to share that cupcake with the local subscribe button. It loves the nom noms. And comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and how you're feeling about this latest episode. And I will see you for the next video. Okay, bye!